Jackie Schlegel. Are you guys awake? This might be the most important uh, presentation of the night, so bear with me. I know you're tired. It's been a long night. Okay. Welcome. My name is Jackie Schlegel. I am the executive director of Texans for Vaccine Choice. And can I just tell you, it has never been a better time in all the world to be an anti-vaxxer. All joking aside, <laughs> You organizations have been benefited dramatically from COVID, and my organization has. The massive issues we've been screaming about the last five years are now being played out for the world to see. Despite our name, Texans for Vaccine Choice, the radical progressives, their big industry cronies, have long used the term anti-vaxxer to assassinate our character, censor our message, and promote retaliation against our families and attempt to erode our reputations in our communities. It has been an incredibly effective campaign until now. Until COVID put it on full display for the world to see. I have long said vaccines are the tip of the iceberg. There's no more significant threat to your life, liberty, and freedom than the run amok pharmaceutical industry that seeks to own your body, mind, and soul. I do not take this David and Goliath story lightly, nor should you. This mom power grassroots organization is on the front line of this war against this billion dollar industry, and we will win. So grab your phones, use the code, follow along. Cards are being handed out, or you can follow me on the PowerPoint. Hopefully our guys are gonna keep up with us tonight. All right, you got it. All right. In 1986, vaccine manufacturers were in trouble. Hot lots of the pertussis vaccine were costing pharmaceutical companies millions of dollars in compensation for killing and injuring children. And what could now be named the cause of the worst health epidemic in modern history, Pre President Ronald Reagan reluctantly signed into law the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, which shielded vaccine manufacturers from liability. While intentions and details surrounding the bill's passing remain debatable, what we now know for sure is the incredible impact that passing has had. Here you see, over here, in 1983, there were 24 doses on the vaccine schedule. In 1986, the act was passed. Today, we have 74 doses before the age of 18, a robust recommended vac adult vaccine schedule, and over 300 vaccines in the making. This is no longer about polio. This is an industry dream come true. Unlimited potential, zero liability in a government willing and ready to mandate their, their products. And mandate they did. In 2015, the industry successfully maneuvered a power play to remove vaccine exemptions for school-age uh, children in California. Numerous states followed suit and filed similar legislation, including Texas, which led to our organization's creation. We quickly morphed into one of the world's largest grassroots organizations in the state of Texas. With over 40,000 members and a unique one-of-the-kind model, in the last five years, TFEC has successfully fought off over 30 industry-sponsored bills and has led the nation in setting the gold standard for vaccine choice advocacy. While TFEC was a Initially formed by those, including myself, who have a vaccine injured child, our diverse membership now includes unvaccinated families, homeschoolers, professionals, teachers, doctors, and even those who oppose the use of vaccines for moral and religious objections due to the use of fetal cells in vaccines. Yes, I said fetal cells, human babies harvested for the industry for medical research and humanitarian vaccine development. While many professionals and researchers prefer a hands-off, blind-eyed approach to the babies they purchase and use, in this deposition, we get an inside look from Dr. Stanley Plotkin, who is known as the godfather of vaccines. Listen closely to the words he has to say in a deposition. Question. 
in your work related to the vaccines, how many fetuses have been a part of that work? 76. And these fetuses were all three months or older when aborted, correct? Yes. And these pieces were cut up into little pieces, right? Yes. It included the lung of the fetus? Yes. The kidney? Yup. Heart? Yes. So I just want to make sure I understand. In your entire career, this was just one study, how many fetuses have you worked with approximately? I don't remember the exact number, but quite a few. Do you have any sense? I mean, this one study alone had 76. How many others have you used aborted fetuses for? I don't remember how many. Just another day, really. Okay, have you ever used orphans to study an experimental vaccine? Yes. Wow. Have you ever used the mentally handicapped to study an experimental vaccine? Like my child. That's what they're talking about. Let that sink in. I derailed from my script. But these are human lives we're talking about. They go on to ask him, and he says he doesn't deny that he would have done so. Do you believe that someone can have a valid religious objection to a vaccine? No, he says. Do you take issue with religious beliefs? Yes. You have said that, quote, vaccination is always under attack by religious zealots who believe the will of God includes death and disease. Yes, he says. Do you stand by that statement? I absolutely do. Are you an atheist? Yes. As you might suspect, the abortion industry is just one of the many who benefit from the revolving door between for-profit mega corporations and the regulatory agencies. Thanks to coronavirus, many are now aware that these agencies we trust to shield us from the corrupt industry practices are not all the beacons of morals and ethics we believe them to be. From the World Health Organization to the Centers for Disease and Control, conflicts of interest, fraudulent practices, mismanagement of their agencies have been on full display for the world to see. But for those of us in the vaccine choice world, this is old news. We've been watching these government agencies become increasingly captive to the industries they have been charged with regulating for over 20 years. FDA commissioners and CDC directors leaving their posts for cushy, high-paying positions at pharmaceutical corporations and vice versa are not uncommon. The pharmaceutical industry spends more money on lobbying than any other industry, nearly 300 million in 2019. They spend nearly 30 billion on marketing. The news TV programs sponsored by these advertising dollars are prohibited from airing stories that might stain the public's impression of a company or its products. They own the agencies, they own our legislators, they own the media, and they are responsible for the divisive propaganda pitting neighbor against neighbor. What an interesting position these convicted criminals find themselves in. As a friend of mine likes to say, these are companies who have been found guilty in the court of law for falsifying data in other illegal and unethical practices that have resulted in the deaths of thousands. And we are to believe they have suddenly found Jesus when it comes to vaccines. <laughs> the medical mandate mob would have you to believe science is God and vaccines are savior. No matter how many safe and effective treatments we have for COVID, they are helping on your life being miserable until their vaccine can be developed, fast-tracked, and mandated for our greater good. But in a wild turn of events, President Trump's Operation Warp Speed has completely flipped the playbook upside down by promising a vaccine and forcing the Democrats to oppose their own science narrative. In recent press conferences, he, have been, he has been abundantly clear that the vaccine will be available uh, as one option for those who have it. While I have full confidence
confidence in Trump's strategy and applaud his position to allow states to govern their response, it's sneaky King Abbott that should have us all alarmed. Right now, it's no mask, no entry. If King Abbott has his way, it's going to be no vaccine, no entry. Abbott has repeatedly participated in the worst manipulation of facts to advance this political agenda. An agenda right out of the big pharma playbook. Speaking of the playbook, this is Mike Toomey. He is known as one of the most powerful lobbyists in Austin, I promise, one more minute. Most notably lobbying for the pharmaceutical giant Merck. He held, has held various political positions in and out of the legislature, but having served as Rick Perry's chief of staff, he is credited as the catalyst behind the disastrous attempt to mandate the Merck HPV vaccine via Governor Perry's executive order in the early 2000s. What is Toomey up to today? He currently serves as the chief of staff for Abbott's coronavirus strike force. Thanks to this media hyped pandemic, questionable and continuously changing data, a governor who has chosen to base his executive orders on flawed statistics and advisors have deep financial incentives, we find ourselves facing the genuine threat of being forced to take a fast track poorly tested vaccine to be granted the luxury of resuming normal life. We have been told that vulnerable populations will be the first in line to receive this vaccine. A population not included in the vaccine safety trials. While this is outrageous enough, me and you might be able to skirt around the vaccine mandate. But these at-risk individuals will be denied vital care services if they do not accept this brand new untested vaccine. That means grandma will not be able to stay in the nursing home and our medically fragile children will be denied therapies, services, or visitations with their loved ones and I'm already seeing it play out. If you wanna come talk to me afterwards. And now that you too are an anti-vaxxer, I hope you will join me by signing the petition for governor opposing Governor Abbott's update of uh, what we believe is his upcoming vaccine mandate. Get involved, make a donation if you are able, no amount is too small, and volunteers. We need you. I went a little over time. Thank you so much for having me.